My family had just moved to Payless Park, Illinois. And it was my very first day at Payless Middle School. Now here I am walking down an unfamiliar hall in an unfamiliar school and a kid punches me right in the gut and as I fall to the ground with the wind knocked out of me he shouts faggot I was so I don't know innocent that I went home after school that afternoon I pulled the old Webster dictionary off the bookshelf and I looked up faggot I didn't know what it meant and Webster said very clearly faggot tinder a small piece of firewood and I thought to myself well why did he call me a faggot, a small piece of firewood, a tinder? I mean, I totally was clueless. I had no idea what that phrase meant. Well, it didn't take me too many more days of school to figure out what that phrase meant. But the reality was I came to learn that him calling me that spoke a greater truth about who he was than about who I was. Because it seems that he had some derogatory nickname for er almost every single student in that school. I mean, it just fascinated me when I was going around introducing myself to people. I had to actually ask them what their name was because I only knew them what the derogatory names were. I mean, I went up to one man and I said, you know, hi, I'm Jim. And he said, hi, I'm Stan. No, I would have never known that because all I ever heard him called was Pollock because this kid had called him Pollock and see what was so sad, as soon as this kid came up with a nickname, that's what the other kids in the school would call the person too. But see, what I loved, my nickname didn't stick. My going around and finding out the real names of people and calling them by their real name they just automatically then called me by my real name. As I said, his calling me that derogatory term spoke a greater truth about who that kid was than about who I was. But having been called that, I wasn't too terribly surprised when I came to learn later on in life what group of people with a certain sexual orientation had a higher percentage of suicide than any other sexual orientation. Isn't that sad? that people are labeled and then seen as less than others to the point that it so wounds them that they no longer see the value of their own life. This is a behavior whose time has come to bring to an end. It is time now to stop all these derogatory terms, all this labeling. As we heard in St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, in Jesus Christ as Christians, there's no longer Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female. All are one. In Christ Jesus, 
all are one in Christ Jesus. And so we gather together today to pray that we uphold the dignity of all life. Of all life. I mean, just stop for a moment. Um, take a look at yourself. What do you see? Um, I mean, I was born with this. I didn't have a choice in the matter. I was born a white male. And yet, there are some people that are born, and as they grow up, they look at themselves, and they see what other people see and hold against them. What has happened in our society that people now have chosen who should be treated with dignity and, and whose life doesn't matter anymore? I mean, let's, let's look at this whole male and female. You know, one's better than the other? I don't think so. And yet, and yet, I want you to think for a moment. When an unborn child in China is, is terminated, what sex do you think is terminated more than the other in China? You know what you call that? Sexism. To the worst possible degree. That the, the, the life of one sex has chosen to live and the other has chosen to die? Something's wrong here. Well, let's go to our own country, the United States. In the lives of the unborn that are terminated, what race do you think is terminated, terminated more than the other? The statistic is off the charts. Isn't that sad? One race is worthy of life, and the other race is worthy of death. It is time that we set aside distinctions that have been along, around for too long. Look at Jesus preached about it in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verse 36 through 37. There was somebody whose life was in dire need and others determined that life not worth their time. So Jesus asked this important question. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? He answered, the one who treated him with mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise followers of Jesus Christ that no longer accept the distinctions that separate, we need to walk the talk. Our life has to preach more loudly than our lips. We have to uphold the dignity of all life. No exception. All life. We need to do like Jesus said and go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Because wasn't it sad in the book of Exodus where it was determined all the male childs will be put to death? And yet we hear in the book of Exodus chapter 2 verse 6 and 9 and opening it she looked and there was a baby boy crying. She was moved with pity for him. Take this child and nurse him for me, and I will pay your wages. I want you to hold on to that image. There is a baby crying whose mother valued his life and went to great lengths to save that baby. Look down upon it 
and the baby was crying. Take this child and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. Go and do likewise. If we're going to preach that all life be upheld, all dignity of life protected, it needs to start with us. We need to see that person crying, crying, why? Because they were called a faggot or a Pollock or something even worse. And reach out and nurse their wounds and help them to see their dignity, their beauty, their worth. It needs to start with each and every one of us. We need to take a very close look at ourselves, our words, our actions, even our thoughts regarding others and find and see the dignity in each and every one of them. And take them in our arms. Love on them. Embrace them. We need to do as Jesus said and go and do likewise and reach out and touch and heal and care for all life.